Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> Going on Hi, here. man. How you doing? I'm good. Ethan, uh, pop his head in yet? No, I haven't seen him yet. I'm going to call him right now. All right. Are we recording? This yeah. will be hilarious as a blooper. Perfect. Got to get the chest a little more open. I'm fresh out of the shower. Oh, yeah. You know. yeah. Me too. Yeah, actually. <laughs> nice. I just finished working out like right before this. All Classic. Work. You're always finishing working out. Yeah. There you go. I just texted him. Nice. I was going to call him, but uh, my phone likes to do this thing where it just doesn't let me. So. Oh, yeah, I know how that is. It's always at the last minute, too. Like, I'm trying to get Zoom open and my computer's freezing. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I saw that uh, that Florida overhead. That was We talked yeah. about that a little bit. That was just a nice yeah. kind of Yeah, I wanted that as a strict press, but uh, yeah, no, nah, that wasn't. You could just happen. feel Another... when it was, like, on your chest that you're going to need a little push. No, so I gave it a little... Uh... I actually gave it a, an attempt before that okay. to do it strict, and it got yeah. like to my forehead, and then it just came back down. Okay, so. yeah, Fair yeah. Enough. It uh, it's one of those things, man. Overhead, it's like you add ten pounds and you're just cooked. Yeah, so, there's like such a hard drop off. High bar squats are the same way for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's fair. I just did some high bar squats, and it's pretty much how it felt. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it feels nice to not be doing twenty reps anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I got a little sick of doing the high volume stuff. I'm sure. And uh, I'm not going to lie. Actually, I will. If you'd like, I can send you the scan. But like, since I have an access to a body fat scanner, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'd be questioning my own natty status. <laughs> like, it's bad, dude. Yeah. <laughs> or good. It's so bad that it's good. Yeah. You've been looking thick in the in the lifting vids, in the training footage yeah. and stuff. Yeah, dude. Um, According to that, that scan that I took, I added like a little bit over a pound of muscle in like yeah. two weeks that's I'm crazy like, uh, that's yeah but also i mean there's a margin of error but like oh for sure I, I feel like your body fat going down and your muscle going up at least one of those is correct right yes so, absolutely yeah. yeah but yeah those dexter scans can be weird it can out there's like fluctuation with your hydration and stuff which i'm sure you know um your electrolyte yeah. balance but yeah, yeah i mean I that's definitive it. improvement though yeah in in my opinion, also, yeah. Where is this guy, dude? He he popped on for a half a off. second, yeah, and then he disappeared. I think he got scared. Or maybe he's <laughs> yeah, going we're talking to about get overhead his press, and he ran. Yeah. <laughs> do you program that for him? A little bit, yeah. yeah. I I mainly do it just because uh, this. If I don't put in a bunch of stuff for him to keep his mind busy, he will just go off and do whatever the hell. Yeah. So, unprogrammed squat maxes. Yeah, he's not. He's pretty good about not going to a max, you know, like without asking okay. me. But it's like he'll go and do like a million sets of bench press with yeah. like you know sets of ten and stuff. And I'm just oh. like, hey, dude, you might as well just do like I don't know dumbbell bench or something different yeah. that won't yeah. completely fuck your recovery. <laughs> go out. Go, that's the time to use the pec deck. If you're gonna do ten yeah. sets of ten, go do the pec deck. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, pretty much what I have him do. Not that many sets, but. I think he's also gotten to a point recently where he stopped, uh, like basically beating himself into the ground with accessories. So that's good. I mean, I think it's uh, you're in a better position where you're having to curtail his effort than trying to motivate him. Push that forward, never yeah. works. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, well, you know, I I say this sometimes to people where I work now, right? Um, I'm like, guys, if it takes thirty minutes out of your day, forty five minutes out of your day, a lot of times. You have 45 minutes. I know your yeah. ass is watching a show for four hours a day. Like, yeah. just go to the gym, guys. Yeah. Um, but Ethan's the opposite, where it's like, hey, dude, you know you can sleep eight hours in a night, right? So. Yeah, he's just got that manic teenager energy. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's it's positive. Yeah. Also, oh, oh. Here he's he is. The audio. I don't know if he's going to, we're going to see his face. Yeah, he might just come on in a mask. I hope he's on in a robe. Ethan, you That'd know be, you were supposed to yeah. wear a robe, right? <laughs> oh, can he said he couldn't hear us earlier. I don't know if he really. Was, uh, yeah, I don't know if he's still having that problem. Okay, I think that's a him problem because I mean we're both unmuted. Yeah, I, so I told him to join on the app. 
Yeah. We're on. This is going to, we're going to see it. He's going to be on his phone. It's going to be like a narrow, you know, phone view. Yeah. He said he can't hear us. At all. And he's going to be sit, sitting in McDonald's. Hold on. I'm going to call this guy real quick. All right. <laughs> You're going to hear this whole interaction. Yo, hello? Yo, what's going on, dude? I don't know. Are you, uh, are you on your phone? Do you have a laptop? I do. It just doesn't have a camera. That's fine. Oh, fuck. Um, are you joining? It's saying like you're connecting to the audio specifically. Um, are you like putting in the meeting ID and everything through the app on the phone? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because you can't, you said you can't hear us. We can't see or hear you. Okay, so. I think I got it figured out. I think I have to dial in from my phone. Okay. Like, so I can go through audio. Okay. Like we just said. So, okay. Uh, I'll just be in there in like two minutes. Okay, but, okay, All dude. Right. All right. Later. All right. You got two minutes to tell me everything that you don't want him to hear. Um, Honestly, I tell him everything. I, I wish I could come up with something funny, but like, yeah. really, like, he's he's one of the few ones where I don't really have a filter and I kind of am just yeah. like, you, you fucking idiot. Like, <laughs> you get it That's together. Fair. Yeah. You got to come um, at him straight. I will say maybe he doesn't need to hear this, um, oh. but he his trajectory is very similar to that of Ed Cohen yeah. when he was younger, and I don't want him to hear that because it'll get his ego up too much. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he like squatting as much as he did at such a young age. I mean, it's different because Ed didn't have proper training, but this guy does. But that's the only real difference. I mean, they yeah. weigh about the same. Ed's shorter. Ed was just in town here. Actually, he did a really? seminar at a gym down here yeah did you a have time of, to go uh, a, couple, a couple of our buddies uh went for some reason i just forgot yeah. that that was gonna happen oh, and i wanted to go but i was working so yeah fair enough yeah yeah andrew clayton lives like two hours from me i'm hoping he'll come into town because we've got a oh, good dude, straw man awesome. gym here and do like a yeah. uh, seminar but we'll see yeah so what's your thing you're doing a meet or you're doing a show now strong yeah man show. signed up for a strongman comp i mean i was having trouble uh gaining anyway and so i was like why don't i just do lightweight it's gonna be i think i can be competitive at, at you have to weigh in at like 180 um yeah. it's july 27th last weekend of july and i'm like 185 okay. 186 right now so i've just been dieting and uh it's cool you know it's weird how you get weaker but you look more like you lift because you're getting leaner yeah yeah, yeah. but i've fucking, just been, it's a horrible paradox right Oh, like totally. A, yeah. Yeah. I have a good friend who's like 140 pounds and he's uh, a soccer player. And that dude looks like he lifts more than I do. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe. Oh, he's I think here. I'm good. Am there I good? we go. Yeah. I it looks I'm like good. we're talking to the uh, pillar from 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there, there we, we are. are. There's the man there himself. The man himself. The young legend, Ethan Montoya. <laughs> there, there he is. There he is. All right. I'm going to let you uh, take this away. Mr. Mason. All right. Well, uh, here we are on Bulk Boys. Uh, this is, episode has been a long time coming. I'm here with Jacob and his client, Ethan, Ethan Montoya, uh, New Mexico state powerlifting record holder, <laughs> champion. Am I correct in that? You are correct. Nice. 165, right? Yeah, 165 or 73 kg, somewhere around there. 73 kg. Okay. But you're moving up a weight class next year. Yeah, uh, I want to go to either 181 or 198. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so that squat's going to be squatting 600 if you go to 198, <laughs> man. <laughs> I know, I plan to. I want to, like, keep the records for, like, ever, mm. honestly. Because there hasn't really been many people that can squat like me. So Yeah, yeah. Well, dude. And, yeah. and it's like a, your soul leaves your body on those squats. I've seen the footage, man. Mm. It's just like a... It's just passion and, you know, but it's not, it's not your glutes because we know you got to, you've been skipping your glute accessories. So you got to do that shit. Man. It hasn't been my glute accessories. It's been my hamstrings. Yeah, it's, it's oh, hamstrings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So it's what been, are you uh, doing for that? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jacob. No, just, it, it's just, it's just been really funny to watch because uh, he literally like his squat week to week leading up into that meet oh. was like, I, cause I, I was pretty doubtful. Of, oh, oh no, we lost him. Oh. Um, He's back. There we go. I was pretty doubtful he was going to be able to squat 500. I won't even lie. 
And yeah. then uh, he one day he did like four was a four forty five for like two, yeah. and I was like, just throw throw a little more on, and try it, and then throw a little more on and try it, and then so what was four forty five for two or three turned into four sixty five for two or three. Yeah, right. Is that right, Ethan? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. And then I was like, okay, maybe he's gonna do it because that was like almost <laughs> a month out. So. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, Ethan, it seems like you're the kind of lifter who steps up in competition. Yeah, like my, when yeah. I compete, it's like I have like 110 percent more strength. I guess you could say. Like yeah. in training, I give it my 100, but in competition, my strength goes up through the roof. Well, that's how you'd prefer it to be. You know, you want to exceed your expectations. Uh, where it, when it counts, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, uh, honestly, we we struggled to hold him back in between yeah. attempts, especially on squat, dude. You were. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I was like halfway ready to fucking smack you to get you out of it <laughs> you were like you were burning all your energy in between attempts I was, was tweaking. Uh, yeah you were tweaking dude i i luke got that all on camera and i didn't post it all for your sake but dude you were literally like panting and breathing heavily for like 10 minutes in between each attempt. i was like shaking and stuff it was like <laughs> weird how much c4 did you take before that huh <laughs> How much pre workout no, did he take? He's so young. I don't think he knows what C4 is. Oh, you know yeah. C4 that's is? a little bit. That's a little. You're a little bit young for that, Holy I guess. Shit, it's like dude. intense oh. pre workout. What? Five. About five scoops? Well, five scoops of pre workout. I was Man. not aware of this. That would be that would be beyond the point of productivity for me. Oh, Ethan, you was that? Take it in like controlled, like times because if you don't then you're just gonna crash um, right. i've overdosed before on caffeine so yeah. i know my limits <laughs> that's good so so ethan were you like just in between squat bench and between bench and deadlift just popping free oh yeah that no, was straight up. Oh, was, okay like, that's what i thought yeah they're called like honey chews or whatever and then like they have like 50 milligrams of caffeine per like little chew that's like this small and like okay. in between sets or whatever warm ups, I'd just be popping constantly. What the fuck? <laughs> I was not aware of any of this. This is all brand new information to me. Fantastic. <laughs> well, you know, Ed Cohen, they say people like he just used to radiate heat on meat day. Like he would be so intense that it would be like Yosemite Sam, like his ears were steaming, you know? So it sounds yeah. like you're, you're inheriting that kind of intensity. I know. I was like, I wanted my nose to bleed so bad. I know that sounds weird, but like the picture of like lifting and then uh, your nose bleeds, like I don't know. I feel like that'd be sick. I don't It'll know if happen. we would have gotten a picture though, because you were facing you're facing the crowd, mm. but they're at like a downward angle. But, so I don't know right? if they were gonna be able to get a good picture of that. Because I have you gotta wait till Sheffield, man. Huh? Yeah, you have to I wait. Till you gotta Sheffield wait till Sheffield. That. Yeah, I know. Have that's my that's Botox. my one goal. That's my goal. Like, in, Dude, like final goal i guess you could say yeah i mean i remember you saying that at the end of that video you know jacob asked you like what are your next plans i think it was like nationals and beat yeah. kevin como yeah nice nice so uh yeah i think maybe a good direction to take this is walking us through that meet day from your perspective and then maybe jacob can jump in to provide a more objective viewpoint <laughs> of things <laughs> um and then after that i mean i do want to rewind it and hear kind of what brought you into lifting and into the weight room so maybe start yeah. with start with that big day the big meet day um so i'll start prior to the meet right like a few like yeah. days before i was like it's all a blur, but I was, like, struggling to, like, make weight, kind of, and I was, like, texting Jacob, like, I don't know if I'm gonna make weight. Like, I texted him in the sauna, like, sitting there, like, for, like, 20 minutes, no water, no nothing. I'm just sitting there, like, I don't know if I'm gonna make weight or not, right? Because, like, I was, I thought that the other guy was just as strong as me, so I wanted to be below weight in him, so, like, we tied, I'd win, of course, right? So, I was surviving on spinach and, like, these like chocolate like nuts or whatever i was surviving on that like the days before and like barely water so you you cut your water several days before the meat yeah 
That's crazy. That had to be brutal. I don't know if that's necessarily a common technique. I think usually you cut it a little closer to the way in, but <laughs> yeah. I was well, like waiting. Yeah. I was no, like from waiting, my like... So, sorry, I keep cutting you off, but <laughs> Ethan had a bad experience water cutting before yeah. or like mentally he thought he did. I didn't mm -hmm. think it was that big of a deal, but I think for you, your thing was you were so obsessed with being lighter than X, Y that what would have been like a what four three four pound weight cut turned into like an eight pound weight cut weight by cut. accident yeah yeah so which was not even necessary at all but anyway keep going ethan i was like oh yeah he's right i did cut too much weight because i was like 170 and i had to be like 165 and it didn't really matter that much but like he said i was like worried about weighing less than him because i thought he was gonna be as strong as me so what did you step on the scale at? Uh, at state I was one hundred sixty three point six. Okay, that's reasonable. So, yeah, yeah. And how did you uh, go about rehydrating and kind of carving back up after that? Oh, so like, I've had so much experience at this point, like water cutting, or whatever. And I know you have to go slowly. You have to slowly drink water and get electrolytes in, otherwise it'll flatline pretty much. So like, I started off with just two packets of Pedialyte in my gallon, right? And I just slowly sip on that and rehydrate myself. Because we had like four hours before anyone started lifting. That's good. And I was, since squat is first, right? And squat's my thing. I was like towards the bottom to lift first. So I didn't really have to worry about really warming up right away. So I just hydrated myself. And of course, I had to go get food. So I like, I ran the Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Nice. Dude, I, I remember that very vividly because we were all like, because uh, he had brought a, a couple other lifters with him and, we, and they lifted before him in earlier flights. And we were like, uh, I don't remember who was with you, but it was like, where's, uh, where's Devin? Where's, you know, so-and-so. And they're like, oh, oh we went we with Ethan. Him. Yeah. And I was like, where the fuck are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Keep going. Yes. So like, got chick fil -A, you know, just kept on eating. And honestly, the like weight, was kind of mostly just like mental. It's just like repairing yourself. I I really wanted to, but I didn't get the chance to. I was gonna watch like the entire like Rocky Four while in the warm up room. Like that was my entire goal, but I couldn't do it because like his like laptop or whatever. You didn't have like data or whatever, right? Yeah. So I I, uh, I brought my I don't even remember what it was, but I brought my laptop, and I used to have a Wi Fi hotspot, but I don't anymore. And that was the thing is I had forgot that I don't have that on my my phone plan anymore so it just all yeah. went down the drain and you know jacob yeah, i know you feel guilty about that and that's going to keep you up for the rest of your yeah. life but i just want to <laughs> say we all make major fuck-ups presidents get impeached <laughs> so it's okay that ethan couldn't watch rocky four in the warm-up room i would have squatted like 520 at least and like come on coach yeah you failed my on bad. me my bad <laughs> proven ergogenic aid the rocky four montage the music mm. okay actually yeah. side note ethan how often do you watch rocky for let's let's talk about this it has to be like twice every month i'm gonna be honest like i get back <laughs> to it <laughs> like every Dude, month i just like <laughs> it's so funny because i like every probably once a month or so you'd probably you text me be like dude you ever notice this about rocky four and i never, like put it together i was like wait how often does this dude watch rocky <laughs> yeah because <laughs> you only notice that if you're re-watching right so like, yeah. yeah yeah it's yeah. like you notice different details every time yeah. anyway, why the fourth one ethan Okay, so that's like his like final fight, kind of, right? Yeah. He's going against yeah. like some guy that's like, everyone says he's too strong for you. You can't beat him, right? Yeah. And then Rocky just like outworks him with like less equipment, less like scientific background or anything, right? He just pure hard work, pure effort, and he beats someone who's just doing it for the fame and doing it for like someone who's cheating with steroids, basically. Sure. Basically, yeah. 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 And uh, that whole train that I agree, that's the best training montage. I do like Rocky too when he's training with um, Apollo, but I think that four beats it out because he's in the snow. He's like improvising equipment. He's pushing wagons and dragging stuff and pressing stuff over his head randomly, you know? Um, yeah. So, it, yeah, it's just nice kind of backwoods uh, in the elements. And and that that's what makes that one special to me.
Yeah. And I like the fact that's like the final fight, kind of. Yeah. Even yeah. though I have my senior year now. So my, in reality, Rocky Four is my senior year now because I'm going to try to go up against the strongest guy in the state. So there you go. So you basically this year you just beat Clubber Lane, right? Isn't that Rocky Three? Uh, yeah, actually. Yeah. I yeah. Say that. XY, XY is a little too nice to call him Clubber Lang, but yeah. okay. the, there was the other guy from, uh, Manzano. Say he wears purple. Yeah, I yeah, Manzano. And I didn't want to say it. But yeah, that guy was talking a whole lot of shit in the oh, warm-up okay. room. And I and that was before the squat. And I was like, all right, let's just see. And then I think I watched him. I he I watched him after you did your opener, and he literally just like hung his head. And then XY did the same thing on video. Oh man. It's just so funny. So uh, that opener that. moved fast. Oh yeah. And I, you could see in the back, like everyone just go like mouth drop and they realize like ah oh, ah oh, shit it's over <laughs> well wow. yeah because he was opening like 40 pounds above the next guy and oh. it and then even then that was probably another 40 pounds over the guy third heaviest opener yeah so yeah. it was just <laughs> i think everyone was just kind of shocked and for whatever reason the mc did not come over and view any of that i know yeah there was a there was a guy walking around today. with a microphone on this the stereo system walking around all the platforms but he basically sat by the the heavyweights the whole time. Oh wow! And yeah, it was a little bit unfair, but yeah, I mean, oh well. Anyway, yeah, yeah, all all that anybody cares about is absolute strength, apparently. Which well, sucks if you're a weight like, class athlete. <laughs> Sorry, I was go ahead. squatting almost as much as the heavyweights too. Like yeah. I was like right there. Yeah. But like they didn't come over to us, and when they did, it they came over for like the featherweights, basically. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you did you kind of know that you that you had it that day after that first attempt that you were going to hit 500 Ethan? Uh I thought I did and I had a very like crucial like mess up. I put my belt way too tight, right? I got too mm. excited. I let it yeah. all get to me. I put my belt too tight. I didn't have enough brace. So my second attempt 485, right? This was supposed to fly cuz I did it in training for two. It was supposed to fly. I went down and I hit the hole wrong, and I basically just like straight up just fell for mm, it. Yeah, good morning. To, yeah, yeah. So that had to uh, shake your confidence a little bit. Uh, no, not really. Yeah, I no. Guess you could say. <laughs> he, he, wow, he still okay. wanted to jump up to five hundred, but uh, I was not going to let him do that because yeah. in order to secure the win, especially with how mm -hmm. I knew deadlift was going to go. I knew that we were going to have to lock in and get as far ahead on squat as right. we could. So I just yeah. had him retake his second with uh, 45. Nice. nice. Yeah. That kind of made me like disappointed. And that's why kind of why that winning state didn't feel that good mm. when I did it because I really wanted 500 and I kind of just like put it down on me, I guess you could say. Like I didn't really feel good about winning state because I didn't give it my all. But well, my think... third attempt on squat. I guess you could say it went pretty good. It moved really slow, which I didn't like, though. So. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably evidence that Jacob made the right call, you know, and that's why you need a coach on on game day because you, uh, you're you not seeing how it's moving and you're not thinking objectively when you're yeah. the athlete who wants to put the weight on the bar. So, um, yeah. And then moving on to bench, uh, you had recently, if I remember right, pretty had a pretty good increase in your benching strength right like your bench had been progressing oh, yeah. pretty well yeah yeah me and jacob like we figured out the like hack i guess you could say to um bench um <clears throat> dips but we basically figured that out my bench like it's sad my bench did not move for an entire year basically or like wow. throughout the summer it, i my last year state my sophomore year i only did 220 on bench right and my bench did not move up all the way till January, where I barely hit 225. Wow. And I guess it was mostly a mental block or whatever. But I'd say I moved up to 250. And I feel like I could have hit more. But on the water cut, I'm guessing, or like less food I had, just I guess it took it on me. But in training, my bench has definitely increased a lot. And, you know, I'm yeah. glad to hear that dips are the secret because this is a dip friendly podcast. It's a dip forward <laughs> podcast. We love dips here at Bulk Boys Podcast. Yeah, it was the uh, 
the the same thing that worked for for me to get my three yeah. fifteen bench worked for him. It was yeah. the dips combined with the banded bench. Nice. I mean, that pretty nice. much took your bench up like twenty five pounds in a few months, Ethan. Something like that. Yeah, two months, about twenty five pounds. Yeah, and we're talking about over ten percent improvement, or t- about ten percent. I mean, that's yeah. huge in a lift in a couple months. Ten percent gain is absurd. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say that your bench has probably gone up even more since then. Yeah, I've gained weight myself, and <laughs> we've been spamming bench, so. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that I'll be seeing a 275 bench from you on Instagram off program. Or, well, Jacob said you, you always text him if you're going to take a max. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. He's just At least he's just learned not to post it anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You're getting smart with it. Uh, yeah, Jacob, yeah. whenever you are coaching an athlete who is so driven and uh, I think could, it, Ethan, it sounded like you were, you were kind of down on your bench because you were feeling like it wasn't moving. So how do you, how do you navigate that? Uh, maybe that's uh maybe that's stepping a little yeah. too far to the side, but no, that's uh that's a like... reasonable question. Like, because Ethan and I both came from the same like mold, so to speak, when it came to the bench, because I also had a poverty bench for like the vast, vast majority of my training history. So I kind of knew. And also there was a Sam Sheether video that I watched who uh, and he basically was talking about his brother, Max, who's one of the strongest powerlifters in the world right now. Yeah. And he how he fixed his bench, basically. And it was like you have this negative mindset about like, I'm bad at bench. I'll always be bad at bench type thing. So you have to set that aside a little bit, do a lot of like close variations and build up the musculature of the upper body. Right. And then when you jump back over to doing competition bench, it feels so much better just because you've put on more muscle, which psychologically makes you say, Hey, maybe I'm actually going to be okay at this. And then you just one step at a time until, I mean, I don't know if you said the number already, but he did bench 250 at state, um, which I think I think of his, his competition was kind of counting on him to do a lot worse mm-hmm. on bench because, yeah. I mean, it's kind of rare that there's going to be a 25 pound increase with no body weight increase. Yeah. You know, in that kind of time frame. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much the nail in the coffin, I would say. I'll, yeah. I'll let Ethan tell the rest of the story there. But uh, yeah, our, our like goals or like our worst case scenario i guess you could say it was me hitting 475 on squat 235 on bench oh my bad you're good yeah. okay you're, here. you're good you're back i'm back um the worst case scenario was 475 on squat um 235 on bench and 455 on deadlift which there's a funny story about 455 when we get to deadlift um I don't know. Bench just has always been psychological for me, I guess you could say. Like, I don't know. Once I finally, like, grew past, like, finally got more strength to the point where, like, mental, like, mental, physical beat mental. And I was able to finally bench 225 easily that my mental block went away, I guess you could say. Yeah. Have you done any uh, technique adjustments over this period of time? Um, I... I don't know. I'm mostly just my grip when you like get the bar, I guess you could say. Like, you know, like bear bear claw grip or whatever. It's like yeah. a little rinse it now. Yeah. I guess I, that's the only change, I guess you could okay. say. Do you feel more power out of the bottom whenever you're uh, gripping it that way, kind of trying to like tuck your elbows almost, I guess? Is the downstream effect of the bear grip? Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like when I'm at the bottom, I pass up like easily i guess you could say yeah. activate my lats more and everything yeah yeah See, i mean I, I do the oh. i do the opposite i had no idea this was happening you go like so this. i go yeah so what i do yeah. is i get my hands here and then i go like this so the yeah. bar is sitting on the heel of my hand here yeah yeah and it was uh i mean that did that did me wonders i didn't have to wear wrist wraps and it actually made me stronger without wrist wraps but uh then i got injured so maybe don't do that anyway keep going guys <laughs> 
but yeah, that, whatever you need to do to cue whatever uh, to to get that stability in the bottom, that's so important in a powerlifting competition because you don't know how long you're going to have to sit that bar on your chest. You're waiting for the the ref to call it. You're not waiting for your buddy to call it. You're not counting in your head. So to be feel like you have the amount of stability to press powerfully out of that is just hugely important. Yeah, I honestly like now that bench, it doesn't feel heavy up top. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like, OK, if it feels heavy when I unrack it. Right. I feel like if I get it to the bottom, at least right, like right here, I feel like I can definitely push it up because I'm so stable on the bottom that no mm -hmm. matter what, if it feels heavy, I can still push through it. Yeah. Do you think the banded bench played a role in that? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Like literally like the lockout off the chest, everything mm -hmm. like just the feeling of like the bands in general like helping me keep control up top and be more yeah. stable right that like correlated so much yeah you know i i never really have messed around with bands very much until jacob convinced me to try it on bench but then pretty quickly i started training for strongman and so i bench got dropped out of the program but i have <laughs> been doing front squats with chains like pause front squats with chains and i've really yeah. noticed uh difference in my acceleration out of the hole with that um so there's there's absolutely something to that the bands and chains um resistance training yeah 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 the oh the like the compensatory acceleration jacob's the uh, west side master so he would know yeah yeah the, uh, the accommodating resistance is, is is good it's uh I, i've kind of got a mixed relationship with it because i think it's like on bench, really useful. You see a lot of people who struggle at lockout. On uh, squat, it's like, eh, you know, hit or miss. Some people probably benefit from it, but I've never really tried it. And then deadlift, it makes no fucking sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Because in in my head, right, if you think about it this way, in, in squat and bench, you have an eccentric and a stretch reflex at the bottom, right? Right. So you're going to have a little bit of pop out of the bottom just from the stretch reflex. But on deadlift, if you're struggling, it's going to be all the way at the bottom, whether you yeah. realize it or not. And so if you're back rounds, that's literally just you, your body trying to compensate mm -hmm. for the fact that you don't have strength out of the bottom. Yeah. So people who put bands on there, if you're training for like athletics or something, probably a good idea. But if you're training just for like getting your deadlift bigger, what are you doing, dude? Like, yeah. My yeah. You're, you're just, you're just avoiding the hardest part of the lift, which is not how you get better. Yeah. Well, you know what I like to do is actually put an SSB bar on my shoulders and then I'll hang some kettlebells from either side of that. And then I'll take a trap bar from the floor and I'll do an explosive jump and then You're I'll, I'll do. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, <laughs> I'll get a few reps of that and then I'll tag Joel Seedman and um, he'll approve of me. Yeah. He'll, he'll probably repost yeah. you. Be like, the dark oh, sorcerer of training. Yeah. <laughs> You so know, actually, right. here's oh, good. I gotta. I want to ask Ethan this. Okay, this is a little bit off topic, but do you watch any like fitness influencers super closely? I know you were you liked a professional week guy a lot, but uh, I watched him for a while until I realized that like our leverages are completely different, and I just have to deadlift differently than him. I tried copying like him for so long, but then even you told me I just gotta deadlift like me. I don't have to deadlift like a certain person and. I honestly stopped following people. The most person I, I think I followed the most is definitely his name's like Dylan Turner or whatever. Uh, I don't know if he's known or whatever, but his squat is like absolutely insane. And like, just like mine, like our form is like exactly the same. So I follow okay. him a lot. Okay. What are like, how, if you were going to describe your squat form to somebody who hasn't seen you squat, like how would you explain it? Like, what are your cues that you're thinking about? Um, so when I, I take so many like brace breaths, like even like before when I'm grabbing the bar, right. I breathe in brace when I'm under the bar, I let go of my brace. I get my brace. I push down my rib cage and flex my abs, pushing against the belt. Right. I unrack it. I keep on breathing. I take my steps. I go one foot to the left, right. One foot to the right, one foot back and center. And I've been doing that for I don't know, for so long. I just like hardwired it into my brain. And I generally wait until the judge says down. I take my breath. I go, push down my ribcage, 
I go down and I usually always go up. So nice. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Um, and Jacob, I know you had a, a pretty great video on cueing for bracing and kind of, you know, preparing your core uh, to get under the bar. So I, some of that sounded familiar to me from that video, like the ribs down, you know, and the abs out. Yeah. I don't know if he got it from me or where he might've gotten it because originally my two influences for getting that bracing thing. And then I put my own spin on it. The original was uh Stuart McGill. It's so mm -hmm. like the McGill big three. Yeah. And then Alex Bromley, like his own little adaptation of it. And then I just took that and made it easier to apply because a lot of what they say is really broad and really general. Yeah. I just made like my own, like four or five exercise, like circuit basically to mm -hmm. train yourself how to brace. Yeah. So I don't know if that was something that I actually directly told Ethan or if he you saw did. my video or I did. Okay. So, um, but that's, I, it's one of my biggest issues that I see with people is like, if I see someone getting ready for a squat and they don't breathe, I just know that this, this is going to be the ugliest squat I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. And if they breathe and then they like super arch their back, unless they're very, very muscular, that's not going to go well either. So, but yeah, just keeping the ribs down. That's the main thing I try to focus on. And I guess it, it's worked for Ethan. So. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, Jacob, Jacob would send me like, I don't know, like starting like two years ago, basically, we like talk off and on. He'd send me like these educational like documentaries. Like he made me watch like the history of West Side, right? He was like, you need to watch this. And I'm like, okay. So I, I've been watching it in school. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> that's the right time. Class. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, I constantly watch his bracing videos and then, like, the stretching and all that. He always sent me that. So, honestly, all my knowledge came from Jacob. Very good. Yeah, I try to – I try to – Ethan is someone who is very curious. Like, a lot of this was because he asked me. Mm. You know, like, other, other people that I coach don't really ask me things, so I'm not just going to force them to, like, watch whatever. But Ethan's someone who's genuinely curious about how he can best maximize his lifting. Yeah. And also, he's someone who kind of – wants to know the history of the sport so i was yeah. like just watch this and you'll understand a lot of my training methods and you'll understand a lot of the history of powerlifting up into like the early 2000s from when things were geared lifting jumping to raw so and then i can kind of you actually you could probably fill in the rest better than i could about the history of raw powerlifting yeah from uh from geared lifting yeah he sent me down a rabbit hole and i used to think nice. all of jacob's like exercises were dumb until he made me watch the West Side documentary, and okay. I'm like, oh, it's all making sense now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was yeah. the dumbest exercise that he had you doing that you turned around on and decided it was worthwhile? I already, I uh, feel like I already know what he's going to say. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you think it is, but it had, it's been GHRs, right? Like, literally just, like, going up and down. Yeah. Like, with your body weight. And I don't, I've cramped so many times doing that, but he made me do it for like an entire like training block and it hurt so bad, yeah. but I feel like it like helped me so much in squat. Yeah. Do you, when you say GHRs, you mean like the leg curl type movement? Is that what you're talking about? Um, like you, you mean like, the 40, have someone hold your legs and you go all the way down. And oh, the Nordic oh, like a Nordic. Nordic curl. Curl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nordic leg curl. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. That one's brutal. That one's rough. Yeah. yeah. I've got those today actually. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. Well, on workout number three, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. dude. Well, because my my schedule is so hectic, yeah. I have to like break the workout up into multiple small workouts. So. Yeah. yeah, Bromley did that when he was personal training. He would oh, do really? like yeah, like four or five micro workouts, like literally three sets of rows, and then he'd do his next exercise between clients, just like all day like that. Yeah, yeah, I know that's what uh Ethan knows who this is, Dom. Uh, yeah. one of my clients yeah, yeah I've talked about him before he uh he also is a very very busy guy and so he'll just like he'll do part of his workout while he's being assistant coach for Sandia and then he'll do nice. part of his workout after and I think sometimes he'll do it in the morning I don't know he's just he'll like just send me updates throughout the day yeah. and I'll be like dude what are you like what why are you doing this <laughs> yeah I get up early, man. I, 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 I'm there at like four 30 or five. So I, cause that's my block of time in the day. So yeah, just do it all at yeah. once. Yeah. I, I used to wake up early. 
dude. Yeah. I don't know how you guys can work out that early. Like, I mean, I would work, I would wake up at like six or six 30 in the morning, but I would yeah. eat something and like go walk the dog. And then I would yeah. be awake enough to go work out. Yeah. Well, I would prefer to do that for sure. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. I got to do like that, like your kind of core warm up circuit, you know, um, my, I do calf. I always do calves before lower days to kind of stretch out my ankles. And then I'll do like rear delt kind of stuff. And, and then I'll do like McGill's big three. And by that time, I kind of feel less sorry for myself and I can start war- really <laughs> warming up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah all right, Ethan, you, you hear that going on the program tomorrow. No, <laughs> uh-huh. no I'm just kidding. <laughs> Poor guy. I was surgery Poor guy. tomorrow. So. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's you that's you won't be able yeah. to talk. That's why we had to do this today. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna suck. Uh, here, before before we go too too far off track, let's let's wrap up what happened at state with the deadlift. Oh, thank you, Jay. Oh, keeping us on task. He needs, thank you. He needs to yeah. hear this story. <laughs> okay, so after squat, honestly, I was just kind of like going downhill. Like my energy was just like dying out. That usually happens to like everyone, I guess, during meets. Yeah. Like at least everyone I've talked to in like high school powerlifting like everyone starts like going downhill towards deadlift and they lose a lot of their energy and a lot of their strength for me i I just kept on popping free workout and it worked for like 10 minute like bursts but i we were really concerned about deadlift because i had like a very very rocky like whole training week beforehand and like weeks coming right yeah i like failed 455 and my like max in like a meet has been 500 and like two weeks prior to state i failed 455 and my opener was supposed to be 485 wow so, so yeah, the, the annoying part I'm no sorry. the annoying part was that the way new mexico high school powerlifting works is specifically for state is that you can't move your opener oh so wow he was gonna have to do 485 if it yeah. killed him so go ahead ethan Okay, so I'm warming up, right? I'm in the warm up room. I am like, I am like almost like on the verge of tears because I almost basically failed 405, uh-huh. right? Jacob doesn't know this. He's helping out the other coaches, right? He's helping out Dom. He's helping up Javin. Um, I fail 455 in the warm up room, right? My opener is supposed to be 485. I basically don't even get it past my quads. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm going to bomb out and lose state. Yeah. This is how in I go front out. Of, in front of the guy in second also, right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose. And honestly, I just kind of put on my best poker face. And I walked out and Jacob was like, how did warm-ups go? I'm like, they went smooth. They went smooth. So I go <laughs> so I on the him, platform. I asked him twice. And he said, the first time you said, you said, uh, yeah, it was smooth. And the second time I was like, yeah, warm ups went good, right? And he was like, uh, uh, yeah, I guess. And I was like, what do you mean, I guess? And then he just like walked away or I got distracted or something. Hey, man, that's the mindset <laughs> you need because you can't change that opener. You're going to pull 485. So you just, that's the one time in your life when you got to lie to yourself are those five minutes. Well, maybe there's actually another five minutes when you have to lie to yourself, but that's, <laughs> you know, not for minors. Okay. But yeah, totally. <laughs> um, so you, yeah, I mean, that's just a testament to your uh, mental resilience that you were able to l- leave that l- that slow 405 in the warm up room and then go out there. Yeah. Um, when 45 was on the platform, I was just looking up at my family and I'm like, all these people came here to watch me. Jacob literally poured like so much time and training me and talking to me. Right. He out of his own personal time, he helped me train. Right. Taught me everything I need to know. I'm like. I can't lose. I already lost last year due to me being too cocky and not training hard enough, right? And I was like, this year, I'm not going to lose. I cannot lose. So I went up, got 485. It moved okay, right? It moved slow, but it it moved. That's all that mattered. Yeah. So honestly, to win state, I, w- I was still, I was freaking out because I didn't know if I was going to win or not because all he, all XY had to do was to pull four or like five i forgot what he had to pull no dude you were you were like black right? he would have had a deadlift like 615 to catch you oh okay Next yeah my bad my bad <laughs> you were like well for some reason uh the other coaches they were like dude you got to pull 505 now so that you can hit a pr 
And I didn't, to be honest, Ethan, I wanted you to not do shit, but you wanted to lift. So I was, I wasn't going to like stop you, but, um, I think it was, it wasn't actually that much. It was like 585, 590 in order to beat you that he would have had to pull to beat you. But, um, the problem was, is that the, the other guy from Manzano was already talking smack that he was going to deadlift 600. And you were telling me that he probably had like, he already had the state record in the deadlift for the weight class. And so I was like, maybe this guy is an outside chance of actually doing it. Wow. But uh, yeah, no, that didn't. No one even came close. I think like Ethan was probably third in the deadlift after all was said and done. Yeah. And base, we had another Sandia kid. Um, He was my second place. He's a very good friend to me. But he pulled a clutch 500 to get um, second place. And he beat out XY, the guy who beat me last year. Right. So basically, I won state. And XY got third. We both we basically swap places. Nice. But nice. it's unsportsmanlike, but when X XY, it could have gone differently. He could have yeah. lifted to his max potential and maybe he would have a chance to go second or even first, but he like slipped on the platform when deadlifting five hundred. It looked like it was gonna move fast, right? He has the leverages where literally it's sumo. He's literally yeah. just gonna eh, right, it's gonna go up. But he slipped on the downward descent. And he failed 500, his opener. And I oh, think that man. got to him mentally, honestly. And he could not pull 500 at all. So yeah. I well, never I... needed to pull 500. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, he was crying on the, he was crying on the podium at the oh, end of the, the end of the next wide. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But so, you know, so the mind's you. a part of the, <laughs> sorry, keep going. Just mutual tears. Well, the mind's a part of the body, man, you know, um, this it sounds so dumb, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Maybe because it sounds so dumb. I mean, you're test. You're not just testing your physical strength out there, you know. Yeah. So the, the I mean, that's absolutely an aspect of the sport. And I mean, for you to tell me that when you were moving so fast in the warm up room before squats, and you saw people's heads drop, I mean, that's a testament to uh, a lack of the mental resiliency that you showed going out there to pull 485 when it, the the, the warm ups were not feeling right. You know, and after kind of having for you what for you was a disappointment on squat because you had a number in mind, right? Um, so to yeah. turn that around, uh, you know, whether or not you were taking fifty milligram caffeine shots every ten minutes is just, you know, that you're not going to fail a drug test from caffeine shots. So, <laughs> yeah, as if they drug test anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we've we've talked quite openly about oh, this yeah. and now that i'm going to be a head coach and i'm actually going to have direct uh influence over you know like be like in all the big coaches meetings and everything i am going to try and push pretty hard so they can find a pharmaceutical company that i'll lend them some drug tests yeah because i feel like yeah. it's not i mean it's not the most expensive thing like an at-home ped test for like yeah. just generic shit is like 30 bucks 50 bucks yeah and you're telling me that some some pharmaceutical company in New Mexico can't shell out what's equivalent to like four hundred dollars for you know a everyone at state. Yeah, not even everyone, just all the boys. Podium, right? Yeah, so, not even podium, first yeah. place, just yeah. the first place people. Yeah, so you, you're gonna get, in, you're gonna have to pee in a cup oh, because of man. <laughs> you know, I just peed in a cup this morning, pre-employment drug screening, and uh, it went smoother than I thought it would. I have to say, what, do you, what does that mean? <laughs> oh no, I. <laughs> so this is this is a tangent but i i just accepted the state job uh that is going to be a big boon in making my situation less desperate basically and so i had mm-hmm. to you know they want you to take like a drug screening so you go pee in the cup to prove that you're not on drugs and i peed in the cup and i'm not on drugs shock um but yeah <laughs> so anyway so don't be afraid to pee in a cup ethan i will i promise yeah, it's you should accurate. probably it's... actually train that. You should probably practice before because you don't want to mess it up. Five <laughs> sets of two peeing in a cup. <laughs> He's gonna have RPE it on, like, cap of eight though. <laughs> yeah, RPE cap of eight. Yeah, yeah, don't don't go to failure on that. <laughs> well, you know, and it, when you bulk up to one ninety eight, and you're actually going to bulk up to two ten, and then you're going to just water cut down, right? But because you won't have your wisdom teeth, it's going to be an easier cut. You know, you're going to have a little oh, less no, no, weight no. in the mouth. It's not your wisdom teeth. It's the tonsils. Oh, yeah, it's tonsils. your tonsils. Well, hey, tonsils are heavier than wisdom teeth. So, I mean, that's going to be a breeze, man. Dude, that's like half yeah. a pound right there. Not yeah. even including the water weight in the tonsils. 
easy. No, I, yeah. I can't lose weight during this. During this surgery and during this recovery, I bought so much chocolate milk and yogurt. Yes. <laughs> I, I will not lose weight. I He's refuse. focused. Dude, That's, yeah, no, I would be uh I'd be pretty manic about that too, to be honest. Especially yeah. because you've already bulked up a pretty good amount since state, haven't you? Yeah, I am like 177 that right now. So it's a we're, we're, yeah. That's a good rate of gain. You know, especially at your age, this is a time to do it, man. You know, yeah. from now until like 25, those are the golden years. Yeah, I can just eat anything and everything and then yeah. I'll still have some sort of abs kind of but yeah well no what i'm hoping is super heavyweight sheffield you go on the platform <laughs> you're 400 pounds of dense <laughs> spherical muscle and that Spherical. squat's gonna be insane he's like a yeah five, like the seven, strong man ball. build yeah five six four hundred pounds <laughs> nothing less than that squats two thousand pounds brown. Yeah. i'm gonna yeah. fill this entire camera space right here yeah. Next time you, if you guys podcast me in the future, I'm, it's just going to be this entire space. You're not going to fit in the frame. Yeah. He's You're going to look like that dude from x <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no range of motion on the bench. Perfect. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although the elbow depth, he won't be able to. Oh, you're right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to row it into your stomach then. You just kind of like sink so deeply. <laughs> like the, way like... Dom, the way Dom used to, he literally just yeah. like rows it into his rib cage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of the big guy, the big benchers who are also big guys at the gym down the street, they, they do like a serious sink, you know, and uh, it's an interesting and then like hard to leg drive out of it. But it definitely that wouldn't work for me. You know, I got to be the soft touch boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a hater of the the sink, honestly. Like there's yeah. there's a certain point where a little bit of a heave is pretty good. Yeah. But that there's just I don't know something about it. It makes no sense to me because you're just making the range of motion bigger. Yeah. Especially if you have to pause in a meet. It just it it kills me because you're just you're sinking it in deeper range of motion. The bar's not motionless, so they won't yeah. call press like I don't know. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, and if you look at Julius Maddox, it's not sinking all that much. It's yeah, sinking a little bit, but it's not like he's just completely flopping. Yeah, well, when you have a little bit of heft, there's always going to be a little sink, you know, because there's yeah. let's uh, put it euphemistically, there's some soft tissue to be compressed, you know, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. so okay, I I know that we're on a timeline, but if we want to backtrack for the last little bit of this podcast and kind of do a speed run of uh your entry into lifting and what brought you to this point ethan i mean did you start lifting for football or was it something uh to you before then um back to the rocky movies uh my dad made me watch all the rocky movies right i was a pretty fat kid growing up and i did not want to work out my dad had to force me to work out i started working out at the fine fitness i'm still working out there now it's my home gym basically um i didn't like working out I really didn't. And honestly, I barely started getting into it my freshman year. And me and my best friend at the time, right, Kevin, he's pretty cool. Um, we saw we heard on the announcements that this club was happening at school, powerlifting, and he was like, Oh, we should join. It sounds fun, right? I'm like, what's powerlifting? Like, and I was like, Okay, a school club, right? I wasn't gonna go. I wasn't gonna go to go to the club, but he made me go and well, I started powerlifting, right? And it wasn't a sport then, it was a club. And I just didn't like lifting until that club literally brought it all out of me. And I started going to the gym at 4.30 every morning because of the Rocky movies, right? Running before, drinking coffee, just like working out and doing that. My passion started because my friend forced me to go to a club. And well, state champion, lost the records. And honestly, winning state this year was – it wasn't as good as I thought it would be, I'm going to be honest. Honestly, losing last year was better than winning this year. Really? Why do you yeah. feel that way? Um, I kind of set, like, my entire, like, life goal to winning state, right? And after you, like, complete, like, a life goal like that, you're like, what do I do now? Like, I know, I know I'm only, like, 17, right? And life goals, like, oh, I'm only 17. Like, I really set my head to try to win state because I lost last year. And once I won, I was kind of like, what do I do now? 
and winning state and losing state last year like made me like realize oh hey i'm i'm not all this i'm not all that right i got distracted by girls on my sophomore year and jacob literally told me to not get distracted because that's what he did and i paid the price and i wasn't humble during sophomore year and i got third place and that kind of really set me on the path to oh i need to work hard i can't get distracted I got to do this every single day. If I want to win, I have to win. So. Yeah. I mean, that's a, it, it's a testament to your maturity that you can have the perspective to step back. I mean, without that much remove, you know, a year away from that and say, here's what I, you know, here's where I aired and here's how I've corrected it. So I think that speaks uh, well to your uh, potential to continue to, uh, head towards Sheffield eventually yeah I like came to the conclusion I need to set my goals higher because yeah. at state I won uh I beat everyone by 100 pounds and the weight class above me he only won he only beat me by 10 pounds and I'm not even in that weight class yeah yeah so I should have set my goals higher <laughs> well hey I mean that's a great reason to validate moving up you know i mean not only is it going to be better for your development in the long term as an athlete but uh you you know you can clean up a weight class higher yeah yeah, yeah. and honestly i was as uh jacob made a video about this but i was one of the weaker people in the weight room when powerlifting first started yeah i could barely bench 135 pounds right and my friend kevin at the time right um he squatted more than me and i could barely squat 205 yeah my deadlift was my best lift at the time it was like 295 or something but now it's the opposite so interesting yeah that is yeah. That's yeah. Like that. the progression was definitely like it was definitely very i mean it's fast but it wasn't like anything out of the ordinary because at the end i think you you like barely made state your freshman year right yeah you took you took literally like last basically right or seven seventh or seven eight. i moved up one seven. Place, so. okay <laughs> um and your lifts were like a almost 300 squat like a 200 pound bench and then a no no, no? what was it your bench? was it was a um 295 squat right a 165 bench and a 370 deadlift and then I basically forced you over the summer to gain weight. And uh, yeah, that was that was where it all started because he was a 148 lifter at that point. OK, yeah. And uh, there's a I mean, what is it? John Hack is like five, eight and he's competing in the 220s now. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like that's pretty much the the guideline there because you're about yeah. five, seven, five, eight around there. Yeah. So, it you know, weight classes are height classes in disguise, as they say. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, that's why I'm doomed to be at super heavyweight at some point. But yeah, man, you got to blow it up there. And I know I know you're going to pivot into strong, man. You know, we see you yeah. doing the Florida overhead. So once you're there, I mean, you're not going to be a 105 kg strong, man. I know you. You're just going to go for world's strongest man. So you got to. That's what I told him. That's what I told him. Yeah, I know. I was yeah, like, yeah. he has to be a bowling ball. Yeah. I'm good, well, yeah. I mean, the mold is kind of changing. I mean, you certainly are going to have to be over 300, but like. Martins and Mitchell, those guys, I mean, they're thickly built, um, but they're not like the Eddie Hall who was, you know, uh, deadlifting yeah. five, 501 or whatever, 500. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also the the sport has shifted now where a lot of the competitions value a little more, more of the, the reps and the moving speed and stuff. Yeah. And also a lot of the movements, they're trying to introduce new things because, you know, Strongman is about doing you know, like random feats of strength. Yeah. So it's a lot more about being smart and being able to think of a way to move something, right? Like it'll be yeah. a new implement no one's yeah. really seen before. And so the guys who are more creative and can figure out how to move their body the right way are starting to win now, which is good because my biggest asset has always been that I'm not to be an asshole, smarter than everyone. So yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you see Hooper's yeah. that way, Lasice is that way. And actually Magnus Samuelson back in the day was that way because he was a builder. And so he has said, like, I had this knack for looking at something that nobody had trained on and like intuitively understanding the most efficient way to handle it. Um, yeah. 
So, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much the mold I'm looking to slide myself into. And it, plus, I'm about the same height as – I'm a little bit shorter than Martins, but I'm mm. about the same height as Mitchell Hooper and Alexei Novikov. Nice. So, yeah. We'll You're where you need to be. You got the frame, yeah. you know, and the strength okay. is there. Yeah. It's being it'll, it'll, it will be there. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, uh, Ethan, what's going to be the next big step for you outside of high school powerlifting? Because I know he wanted to tell me his little – demonic plan that he cooked up <laughs> oh yeah um so <laughs> um honestly a lot of surprisingly a lot of colleges are popping up with like offers and stuff like scholarships for powerlifting and my like little demonic plan right now right i i total higher than three states Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. My goal is definitely to beat out that Colorado guy and be like the strongest guy in the four corners or whatever. So I can like take that cool ass photo in like the four corners area, like the monument. So I'd nice. be like, I'm the strongest guy in these four states. I'm glad but, you have the like, Instagram post planned. Mm -hmm, I got it yeah, planned. You got everything <laughs> planned, dude. Yeah. Well, we're also uh, doing a meet in November. We're officially signed up now, both he and I. Yeah. Oh, nice. Mutual yeah. meet. Yeah, so we've actually I we like accidentally put a team together. Um, so <laughs> USAPL has when you sign up, they have a little drop down menu for a team, and I wasn't aware of that. And so uh, Dom is competing with us, and he was like, "Hey, are we gonna make a team?" And I was like, "Why the fuck not?" So then Watermelon Storm was born. And that's the name of the the team right yep. there. You better get matching singlets and like the uh the pull away sweatpants, you know, like the Harlem Glo Globetrotter sweatpants. Yeah. Yeah, like the basketball <laughs> players, they have their tearaway like outfits yeah. over their jerseys. <laughs> and hey, like, here's we we can just like I can I have Photoshop. I can just like put a watermelon and then like a lightning bolt through it, and we can have that in the back of all our hoodies. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know what it reminds <laughs> me of is that you maybe never played this computer game. It might be before your time, but it's like backyard basketball. And you play basketball, but the really the cool part is you get to customize the players and the uniforms. But that's like a backyard basketball logo. So I appreciate that from that perspective. Yeah. And you know, yeah, for be... all of our oh, sorry, go ahead. No, just I'm just saying I'm like I'm really looking forward to it, honestly. Because yeah. I've always like I've coached Dom, I've coached Ethan. Mm -hmm. Xander's been stronger than me for my whole fucking that's a guy we gotta yeah. get on the podcast for uh -huh. my whole training career. And then uh until recently. And now it's like he's trying to be the strongest teenager in, you know, four states. I'm trying to be the strongest lifter, period, just in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've got a got a good ways to climb on that. But I mean, I'm, it's not horribly far away because New Mexico is not that competitive of a state. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. Where what are you going to compete at, Jacob? Have you decided? Oh, yeah. You're going to be so proud of me for the bulk boys podcast i'm going to compete at 242 beautiful so beautiful yeah, yeah so somebody like, has to not be hypocritical with the title since i'm cutting down <laughs> you know to make 180 yeah i mean i'm yeah. still i would still have to cut like four pounds from where i'm at right now uh but that's just you're but, one poop away from that man. exactly yeah that's yeah. what i'm saying like yeah. i just need to just need to not eat for a day and my fast tall guy skin, tall skinny guy metabolism will just yeah <laughs> yeah so um and then ethan so we've got someone in, I don't know what your friend Josh is com is going to compete at, but we've got 165, 181, 220, and I'm 242. Nice. So, yeah, so we just need a 198 or. Yeah. What's he, I wish what's he, he could be, be me, but I'm not going to gain weight that fast. I don't, <laughs> I don't really necessarily want to gain all fat. So yeah, yeah, totally. No, what's he, so what's Josh competing at? Uh, 132. Jesus Christ. He's a small ass kid. He is a small ass kid, but that kid is strong as hell. Like mm -hmm. some, you know, being around high school powerlifters makes me really insecure. I'm not even going to lie to you <laughs> because I see these kids and realistically, I started lifting a lot later than a lot of them. Like a lot of them started lifting in like eighth grade or freshman year, but it still like pisses me off. I'll see a junior or a senior who's like mm -hmm. in my weight class and he'll be lifting almost as much as me. And I guess this hasn't happened recently because of, you know, all the recent progress I've made, but I was just like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> well it's your fault like seeing, for coaching them so well man you know, brought it up on yourself yeah. yeah yeah and you know ethan can attest to this i'm literally the super weapon for sandia high school because i'm the only coach that can develop lifters apparently 
because it seems like every other school like has like a one percent uptick in their performance every year whereas sandia went from like what did that first year we took like 11th in state as a team or like as a school yeah last year we were second and next year barring something tragic we're gonna make first so yeah we're pretty me. much set to win. It's none of the other coaches it's only me <laughs> well he trains like most of okay and not to yeah. say this not this like be all that he trains most of the podium basically you could say yeah it will and also i co like dom was the one with the major lifting experience and i've coached dom since he got into lifting yeah so and he so he basically would just take my programs edit them a little and then give them to you guys yeah yeah that's what he did i like i rec recognized it and i'm like is this yeah, i don't yeah i don't mind no it's not me there's but, no way i mean there was no way they were going to get me to program for that whole team unless i was either there in person or they paid me and they weren't going to do i wasn't able to be there in person at the time so yeah anyhow yeah all right illinois leave it in the rear view man yeah 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 i'm looking forward actually i'm gonna talk to the athletic director tomorrow about getting officially hired because I got some uh, insider info that the job is available and was almost taken, but was not. So, oh, wow. Hey, yeah. man. Well, I, I think, I mean, you're the most qualified person. You have the best uh, claim to it, you know, given your yeah. relationship with the team. So I yeah. hope that, I hope they, I hope they recognize that. Yeah, I agree. And I think, to be honest, it's not going to be that competitive. I think Ethan would agree. Like they had a struggle, they had a really hard time finding a head coach last year. Really? Yeah, it was horrible. I thought I wasn't gonna be able to do powerlifting. I thought like it was over for me. So, wow. Yeah. Well, now he's gonna be. Now we're gonna be competing USAPL, and who knows? You might not even. You might just go off on your own doing that after your senior year. Oh like, uh, well, I I have a really tough decision to make. Honestly, if I get strong enough to the point where I have to choose between state and nationals, I don't know which one which one I'm gonna choose. Because of course, if I go. If I go to state, I'm gonna win, right? That's gonna that's pretty much almost guaranteed. If, especially if I stay in 198, there's not really many kids in the state that work as hard as me or lift as much as me, right? There's only one guy that could like automatically beat me, and he's in the weight class above me, Kevin Como, the strongest kid in the state. Yeah, but when he has, if a I, progress, so yeah, no, his bench is, I don't know, I don't know how, but his bench is like we, increasing, we like. We know how Ethan. He he's in <laughs> on it, but I we can't really say it on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, so. it's true. Anyhow, yeah. yeah. After, but um, after I unhit record, I don't know if we, if we're talking about like you trying to get a scholarship for powerlifting. I would say probably the nationals appearance would mean more. Yeah, you know, if it was like Texas high school powerlifting, it'd be a little different because that's almost as competitive as USAPL nationals, to be honest. Yeah, but if we're just if we're talking about New Mexico state championships um i would i mean we're yeah we're national. doing it's like it's it's not really competitive yeah and I, i'm basically already uh, strong enough to compete in nationals but i want a podium at nationals i don't want to just go there spend the money and all that just to end up in like fifth place well i, I do think that. even well, regardless of where you end up it's probably an investment in your future uh, to, to get experience at a national level meet that moves at a different pace than maybe a local meet or even the state meet it. And uh, to just go through that sort of, I mean, it's, it's pro I imagine that it's extremely intense. I mean, I watched the coverage, you know, and that's gotta be uh kind of an overwhelming scenario to be walking out <laughs> a squat <laughs> under with the lights and the, uh, you know, the commentators and the cameras. So, yeah. And I'll be without Jacob, all my friends. I won't, my family won't be there either, probably because traveling expenses, right? So it'll just be me and me. So, it's oh, don't worry. Ja not to put Jacob on the spot, but he did tell me that he would hitchhike to wherever Nationals is and surprise <laughs> you. This is true. This is true. <laughs> no, I was just thinking like, Depending on when it is, if I end up making like collegiate nationals or some shit, uh, maybe, maybe if it's like back to back weekends, I'll just take a long vacation. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. But also, I'm I'm only signed up for the open, for the meet in November because yeah. I maybe it's the little it's like the Louis Simmons in me. He wouldn't let any of his lifters compete 
you know, if whether they were a teenager or junior lifter, he wouldn't let them compete with the teen or junior like classes. He would only let them compete in the open. And that's kind of a philosophy that I agree with. Right. Because listen, if you can go to nationals, like high school nationals and get clout and get, you know, your scholarship from it or whatever, go for it. But for me, my goal is like, I'm just trying to build my base of strength so that I can eventually jump the strongman. And I would just rather see how I stack up against like the grown ass men. Cause that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, and that looking back that getting winning, you know, a teen division for you, Jacob, you know, or like a junior division, you know, or, or in, in a different context for me, if I entered novice at like my first strongman show, that's not going to mean anything anyway, because you enter novice because you don't care what kind of psychopath enters novice because they want a trophy, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it makes sense for to do that, you know, given your goals, I think. Mm. Yeah, I agree. That's why I, well, I told Ethan when he signed up that you, he should, he should also sign up for the open because I want to see where he stacks up compared to everyone else. And I want him yeah. to see where he stacks up compared to everyone else. He keeps you humble. Although to be honest, I was looking at the roster for everyone who's going to be there. Who's already signed up. He might win the open too. And in, in one. Yeah. Oh, only one your other friend Xander isn't going to be there, right? Well, Xander's going to be there, but he's not in your weight class. So oh. Xander's going to win the whole meet. He's uh, Mason. <laughs> you would you would like him. He's yeah. He's something. I don't know if I might have sent you his Instagram or something, but he is. Uh, how do I say this? He's like five six. You know, he's one seventy ish. Five. Uh, what is it? Five fifteen squat. Three sixty five bench. Five. 30 deadlift wow yeah yeah and he did a mock meet where the deadlift was only like 10 pounds less than that that's but the other two numbers were where those prs came from yeah yeah which was uh yeah it's humbling for me <laughs> because <laughs> he's so much lighter than me yeah that i mean that's like, a ridiculous yeah. bench yeah yeah and he's i don't know also he he is he's very like his technique is very like uh textbook you know like he's yeah. got the shoulder width squat stance with his feet mm -hmm. barely turned out oh wow you know, the bench is like i just everything's super crisp um yeah. the deadlift is the only one that gives me a little question mark because he he literally i think his feet are too narrow like they're mm -hmm. almost touching so wow that's like yeah. the dan bell deadlift yeah yeah actually very very similar and uh dude yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try not to get smoked on dots by Ethan and and uh, <laughs> Xander because Xander's probably just going to get like a almost a 500 dot score. Yeah. So. Oh, just for his bench? His bench is insane, so that literally carries him. Yeah, well, <laughs> dude, he was telling me his like goal numbers for the meet, and I'm like, you're fucking, fucking crazy. <laughs> I just hope I out-total him. That's the goal. Yeah, I, that's <laughs> I just got to beat him on total. So. Yeah. Well, you know, for I all of our I'm loving... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was like, I think I'm going to try for, like, considering the meet's, like, five months away, right? That's, like, a mm -hmm. that's like four training blocks, yeah. right? Yeah, you got, yeah. you got a while, yeah. And I'm gaining weight through that. And if I have to cut down, I'll cut down a little bit, right? Um, I'm definitely going to try to try to meet 545 on squat. Um, for bench, I want at least 275. My bench doesn't move up that much that fast so i'm gonna try at least 275 paused and honestly my deadlift i hope this training block like helps it and like i don't know helps fix it i won't i won't skip hamstring anymore i'm sorry but kilos and the stiff bar is definitely gonna yeah. impact me yeah yeah, yeah it feels a little yeah, my, my goal my goal going into the meet when i before i signed up was i wanted my i just wanted it to be five pounds more than my current quote unquote PR deadlift because I'm going yeah. from straps, deadlift bar, rubber plates to stiff bar comp plates, no straps. Yeah. But I'm not gonna lie, I when I did that 515 the other day, I mean it was on a deadlift bar, but it was like it felt better than 500 before that 600 deadlift. It moved fast, and, man. Yeah, and then I did 515 on a stiff bar two days ago, mm. and it moved the same as that. So it's wow. like. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to like PED test myself. Um, <laughs> but, 
and then i don't know today was uh my like my heavier bench day and that's going really well so i'm like you know that feeling where you're almost a little you're kind of nervous because things are going a little too well yeah something bad's about to happen <laughs> yeah it's like uh, something's gonna happen but well I mean, hey man just let it be like a disaster in your personal life or like a family tragedy instead <laughs> of like something in your lifting you know this is true this yeah. is true and also i don't know ethan i'm what what is your goal on deadlift then for the meet you never put a number on it you have a number I don't know, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. I like I want my deadlift to be good because that's like the only like chance I have at like competing against Kevin Como at all, right? Mm. That's like if my deadlift is like better than his, which his is like six hundred something, right? Yeah. Or something like that. But I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um I just I gotta see how the training block goes and yep. put my mental strength to it, I guess. Yeah. I really don't think it's gonna be that crazy of a transition like my goal for you in november is just that your deadlift is back in line with your squat which is going to be with the the change in plates and everything probably five th probably 5 30 is where i would put you at i don't know we'll see i also know you want to get you want to get that school record so bad so it's possible that it's more than that well because yeah. like i have two months to hit the school squat record right yeah i guess so which is a phony ass record to begin with, but anyway. yeah, yeah. So, so let's let's give Mason the backstory here. So, the the current squat record for Sandia High is held by a, fo a former football player named Jeremiah Thompson. Three hundred pound dude. Yeah, he's like three hundred pounds. You know, just crazy giant legs, the whole nine yards. It was a high squat, and I can tell you that for a fact because I know the football coach who was there at the time because he was at Sandia for like twenty years. And he encouraged his guys to squat a little high. Mm -hmm. Not like not yeah. even like a little high, like three or four inches above parallel. Yeah. And so I'm just like it I don't know, it just kind of irks me because in my head, if Ethan were to do five fifteen, they should erase Jeremiah off the board because he's a hundred sure. pounds heavier than Ethan. And he's yeah. also excuse me, and he also didn't go to death. So yeah. That's my take. They also erased, they already erased someone else's name off the board because it wasn't to, to standard. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's a precedent for that, then one would hope that that record was evaluated the same way. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know the head coach for the football, like for the athletic director and the head football coach that well. I guess I will soon. Yeah. So. Yeah. You got to go up to him in the lunchroom, slam your tray down. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, hey, motherfucker, give my lifter the fucking record. That's asshole. right. Yeah. And I want your hash browns. Yeah. <laughs> give me the singlet. Give me the, the Sandia <laughs> high singlet. <laughs> and then you're just going to walk around in it at school all day. Just yeah. Exactly. I have walked around in a singlet all day. At you school. actually? Yeah. I have actually. That's amazing. I will, well, after like, because I, I wore my singlet during um my squat attempt during football, right? And I was so disoriented after, and my hands were so tore up, right? I, like, I, did, I didn't want to change. And, like, I don't care, right? I have chalk mm -hmm. everywhere. I just walk in the class with a singlet on and <laughs> <laughs> my power lifting gear on, my belt on, my my uh, wrist wraps, and I just walk in with my headphones on. Do you have the on, my... on? Do you have uh -huh. the on? Oh, my yeah. God, dude. Yeah, Mason, I might go to the dark side for the meet. I might buy some inzers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking. Why not, it. man? Why not? Yeah. We're going to have to cut them off then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know well, you're going extra, extra small too. Yeah, exactly. Actually, Ethan, you should you should tell him that story from state. I'm gonna grab some water real quick. Sure. Wait, which one? The the one of you uh, have me having to cut your socks. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Here, I'll be right back, guys. Okay. Okay. So like, basically, the knee sleeves are like, you cannot get them on if you don't have like long socks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I had to pull up the inserts with the long socks, but the knee sleeves are too tight where you can't get the socks out. And the rule book states that the socks can't be under the knee sleeves. So what we had to do, we had to cut the sock and stuff it more inside so the judges couldn't see the, so the sock. Yeah. So yeah. I basically just like that entire time, just I brought like three extra pairs of socks so we could keep on cutting socks because the damn knee sleeves are too tight. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you didn't take them off between attempts or anything? 
Uh, no, but my yeah. legs were definitely like losing like blood flow at the end. I'm yeah, you're not going to squat very much if you can't feel your calves. Yeah, well, I have no calves, so. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to feel. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, man, I just got these like uh elbow sleeves, which I've never used before, Uh, just for the strongman competition. More mainly so I don't tear my like skin open on the stones, but uh yeah. they are just a nightmare to get on. I mean, that's like I feel like I've done all of my back accessories by the time I like row it onto my elbow. Row it on. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. But the I've like, I've, yeah. I've like torn my hands from like trying to put on the ends of knee sleeves, right? Yeah. Like I think I still have the scars now. I don't I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, like all my knuckles were just completely bleeding oh. because I had kept on trying to pull it up higher. Yeah, could you imagine being like a geared power lifter and, and just how uncomfortable the knee sleeves are? Imagine that over your whole body and also like five oh. times tighter. No, I could not imagine that. I don't yeah. I could never do geared power lifting. It's just yeah. like I don't know. Personally, my like philosophy, and I know like it started off the sport. Yeah. I think it's cheating. But that's because I'm a younger generation. Like when Jacob comes mm. back, he's probably going to yeah. smack me. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, I don't think it's cheating unless you're trying to compete raw, hiding a bench shirt under your singlet, you know? Yeah. Ethan says that multiply is cheating. It is cheating. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I think I think it's interesting that we got to a point where people were in canvas to lift. Yeah. But also, I'm not going to lie. Those, those things look pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, I I own a deadlift suit, but like, I, I don't, you know, I've thought about this. I'm like, I bought it for being a 231 strongman. I may never actually put it on. Yeah, because you wouldn't so fit. I might, just have to, I might have to resell it. Yeah. So we'll see. Hey man, give me five years to outgrow the the lightweights, and uh, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll be buying it from you. There we go. Yeah, the yeah. 231. Uh, yeah, the 231. That would actually be, I could see that. You'd be like a static monster for your height. Oh, dude, but I'd have so much trouble on the loading events. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever, you know what, I want Ethan, after he graduates, after he does state or nationals or whatever, I'm going to have him, I'm going to take him into Iron Soul and we're going to do Atlas Stones. I just want to see nice. how that would yeah. go. <laughs> just don't tear your bicep, man. Drop it before you tear your bicep. Mm, speaking of injuries, speaking of injuries. Oh, oh yeah. Did you? Yeah, we need to talk about this a little bit. Yeah. By the way, we've got about five minutes. So. Yeah, we got to close out this. Both Jacob and I have uh, appointments to get to. So. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see. Um, speaking of injuries, well, I've like done like so many horrible things when it comes to like lifting, and I haven't gotten injured, right? Yeah. He's, you know, Jacob hasn't seen me, but like every time I, mean, I had a problem, when I used to squat that I'd like shrug at the top and I'd fall backwards. Oh wow! Huh. I have not injured anything at all, but like recently, I was doing a clean. I'm you saw it. I was doing a clean, and I like folded, and it hit Dude. my quad. So. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Careful not to like, uh, you know. Sometimes when you catch a clean, you'll blood choke yourself too. So try to avoid yeah. that. <laughs> I passed out I... on a pause front squat the other day. I just came to, oh, you know, nobody you really? else is in there. Yeah, I came to, Holy and shit. I mean, the bar, the plates were like, saved me from getting guillotine, but I was just like staring up at the ceiling. I was like, what oh, just dude. happened to me? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. probably, if, if it landed, like if I fell backward on a front squad, I'd probably break my fucking jaw or my nose or something. Yeah, absolutely. I got a big ass head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you got the, uh, the rib, like the uh, triangular rib cage too. Yeah, I do. This is true. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. Yeah, I have the weirdest build, like, but it's very, like, pro, like, very useful for lifting because I don't yeah. have, I'm not really badly built for any lift. So I guess squat, squat a little bit, but that's also, weirdly enough, that lift came the most naturally to me. Yeah. Early on. Yeah. That's now it doesn't, but now that's just because I think I have a little bit of a mental thing going on because mm. this guy squatted 500 before me. Sure. So now I'm all yeah. insecure. <laughs> well, your, your stand, your setup looks really tight lately. I know you've been widening yeah. your stance and kind of more externally rotating your hips. And yeah, I mean, you were just, uh, when you did that 20 rep, you were just like a piston. Yeah, I was, uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to lie. I, 
I, I did, I unracked it and I was like, fuck, this is so much heavier than the last time I did set of 20. Ethan actually, yeah. Ethan should tell you the poor, this poor soul. I put him through so many sets of 20. It was so much, it was so bad. It yeah. was literally just because I wanted him to not, this is not the only reason, but I wanted him to be mentally exhausted so he couldn't just go do shit on his own and fuck up the <laughs> training program. That's the so, wisdom of a coach who knows their athlete. So you're saying like, no, it was no positive. To do it? No, 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 no. It was very good for you. Like, Don't get me wrong, but it was. <laughs> but there's, I could have achieved the same thing in a much less mentally stressful way. Yeah. But I needed oh to so that you would just not go fuck around on your own time. Well, and this will keep you, Ethan, from ever wanting to do CrossFit because CrossFit <laughs> just starts with a twenty rep squat. So it'll keep you oh, on the path. Not. It's so yeah. bad, dude. <laughs> I yeah, I used to work as a CrossFit coach, and yeah. they would make me go do some of the workouts dude overhead squats till i puked it was oh, fucking bad yeah you have to do those in football the overhead, overhead squats. squats i yeah. i am not made to do them i don't know if it's just like my power lifting like mobility i yeah, physically yeah. cannot get that or yeah my, your my pecs feet? are too oh, really? tight you know you, yeah, it's yeah. Probably pecs your pecs are too juicy the pecs yeah. and the lats a little bit yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's the biggest contributor to overhead issues but luckily i'm still very very flexible for the most part so I mean, you you both saw my two twenty five overhead. Oh, that was yeah. like it just like I've watched it more right than once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put I put it out there a couple times. I was I'm really proud of that actually. But no, also, no, I didn't mean because you reposted yeah. it. I mean because I kept going back and like watching it again. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that's how it was with Ethan's. Actually, Ethan, you've been dethroned on my channel. Your short of you squatting five hundred is no longer the most viewed video on my channel. What? Yeah, it's a video of me deadlifting now. Damn. Yeah. What a shame. I know. How what are you gonna do, dude? Yeah. Now you're gonna have to squat 585 at 18 or something. Yeah. We're gonna, you have to put it as six plates. Like you have to put it as 17 yeah. year old squat six plates because 585 doesn't sound that good. Yeah, six you gotta plates. Say six plates. Yeah, but also do it on the key 20 kilo plates. Like the 20 kilo calibrated plates, because you know 45 pounds is 20.4 kilos. So you're cutting off like four mm. kilos there. You know what I'm saying? See, there we go. Six now we're, plates now we're at talking. the Alico. Yeah. Now yeah. we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> dude, those comp plates. I'm not gonna lie, dude. Uh I think Ethan might be okay when he jumps to the comp plates because yeah. I've said this before. Those plates at state were ridiculous. Those things are heavier than they're almost as heavy as like my 55s that I have. They fell in my hand almost. They've got like five pounds of tetanus on them. And yeah, exactly. Like yeah. If, you, if you get a scratch at all, you're going to have to go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor. Well, all right, poor boys. Ethan. I think oh, we got a, we got an out, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yeah. cut you off. No, you're good. That's our out right there. Is That's my alarm to go to work. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> so, okay. All right. All right. See boys. you guys. Nice talking. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Right, see you yeah. guys.